Hello and welcome to the exiled edition of NRC. <laughs> yes. Yeah. There were layoffs and everyone has been affected in these trying times. So we find ourselves in a garage. <laughs> It's a lot colder in here. <laughs> Very cold. Yeah. Our lighting is poor. <laughs> but we're here anyways. No insulation. It, but here we no. are. <laughs> it's windy. It's windy, you know. You but know, we still have our box of Star Trek Armada. You know what I should have done? What I should have done. I should have worn my Coheed and Cambria hat. Yeah. Because it's and in so my jacket pocket, uh, and my jacket's in my car. Oh. So uh, I think introductions are in order. We skipped over that part. Yeah. Right. Or ignored that part. Yeah. I'm Noah. I'm Ryan. I'm Curtis. And I'm cold. Uh-huh. <laughs> and welcome to Trekking Into Darkness. Is this still Trekking Into Darkness? NRC Trekking Into Darkness, I suppose. I, s- I suppose every single episode we talk about Star Trek is another installment of Trekking Into Darkness. Oh, that's yeah. a fair point. I should have... Well, too oh. late to fix last week's episode. <laughs> oh, well. I don't know. I liked episode Funf. <laughs> that was... Yeah, that's, that's German, that's, right? That's German for five. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, that was pretty good. Look at us. That Inconsistencies was, abound. Yeah, right. it's yeah, perfect. Every, every, we, we, don't, we don't number things consistently. Yeah. We don't release things consistently. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We don't have the same set. Correct. Not yeah. all the same people show up. Yep, yep. Yeah. But one thing is constant. That's this box of Star Trek Armada <laughs> from 1999 or whatever. Yep, yep. All righty. So what episode are we reviewing today, Noah? So in an endeavor to find something that I don't think many people would choose to talk about for any ration, like reasonable reason, I looked high and low for a Voyager episode that would simultaneously captivate and repulse you. I don't think I succeeded in that regard, but I got close. And in that, I found Voyager's Season 2, Episode 2, Initiations. Yes. Uh, Curtis, what what is your reaction to watching this episode? We just watched it. uh, uh, That's the reaction I was looking (laughs) for. I mean, going in, I didn't know the episode really existed yeah. Uh-huh. So <laughs> yeah, it's definitely one of those Voyager episodes that we might have skipped when we were growing I, up. I've <laughs> seen this episode before. Uh, I don't remember it. I, you know, I didn't remember it before watching it. Then I saw Aaron Eisenberg guest starring as a Kazon, mm. and I was like, I remember having watched this episode. I don't remember what happens. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I, I don't remember it really at all. That's probably for the best. Probably. I wish I could forget Threshold, but I can't. Uh, I think it's better to be a forgettable Voyager episode uh, rather than an extremely horrible one because that just sticks with you the rest of your life. Uh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Words to live by. Uh. Hey. I mean, you could say that about anything. Yeah. Like, If it's so horrible that you remember it being horrible, that's worse than just being mildly inoffensive that you would forget about it. Mm-hmm. Or you could make the argument vice versa, that it's better to be remembered for being horrible so that at least somebody remembers that you exist. I mean, that, that's like the whole reason why everybody remembers the room. Exactly. So, there's an argument hence, to be made both ways. And hence they made a movie about well, the making of the room. Involving very few of the people that made the room. Yeah, but big mm. name actors. Right, which made it even more hilarious yeah. in some aspects. <laughs> yeah. Right, so... Because Curtis has watched The Room extensively, haven't you, Curtis? Really? No, but I know what you're talking about. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's exactly what I thought. <laughs> okay, let's get into it before we get too off track. Me? Off track? Ah. Never. So this episode, it was originally aired back in September 4th, 1995. It was directed by uh, Winrick Colby. I don't know if that's how you say his name sure. who cares sure. it was written by uh kenneth biller and lisa clink and i think lisa did a lot of she was like an in-house writer for voyager for voyager yeah, yeah. so she was like involved with a lot of it i feel bad for her. yeah uh it did have it has a score 
of 6.6 out of 10, according to IMDb, Hmm. which I think is kind of consistent. Interestingly enough, believe it or not, Ryan, when Hmm. I was searching high and low for this episode, Mm -hmm. I actually saw IMDb scores for other episodes. Okay. Uh, Some of somewhat unintentionally like i wasn't seeking them out but there they were Mm. and voyager episodes are surprisingly like they hover around the seven point mark Mm. i think people are apologists for voyager oh no which doesn't surprise me because to be a voyager fan you kind of have to overlook some stuff Uh. well i saw a couple like really good reviews for this episode for this episode well maybe not good just entertaining okay for the (laughs) So uh, the first one that comes up when you go on the IMDb page, it's just, uh, ugh. Accurate? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the next really good one. You told scroll. me one of them. Yeah, I, I, recall, I need to find it correctly. It, it ah, was an enjoyable. It has a good title, If Klingons Were Cavemen. Once again, accurate. <laughs> if you ever wondered what it would be like if you traveled back in time to when Klingons were cavemen, but they overpowered you and went to the future where they acquired advanced technology. <laughs> uh, never mind. <laughs> accurate. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and uh, the, the final, there are a couple other reviews, but they're all really long, so I'm just going to go to this last one. It just says, uh, Klingons with a bad hair day. <laughs> The Kazan hair is mm. very uh, rigid, right? Yeah. Particular, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it has the the weird stones that are sometimes in it, and I don't know. There's a reason the Kazan don't really show up after season two. I, I mean, just they're there a couple of times in season three, but I just assume they they flew too far away. Right, that's the in-universe explanation, but yeah. you know. It's because they didn't get very good ratings, yeah. I assume. Well, what <clears throat> the last few episodes when they did show up was like Seska trying to take over Basics Part One and Two, mm-hmm. and then you can sit through those. And then the the episode, I think the last episode we saw them was in Shattered. Shattered. Oh yeah, that's a fun episode. Mm-hmm. Th- that's like season six, six or seven. Six or seven. It's it's, it's a later season. End. Yeah. yeah. And that that one's a pretty good episode. I really right that. because the episode recognizes that its uh, setting is absurd or its premise is absurd, yeah. and it just sort of rolls with it and it has fun. You get to see uh, Chaotica, and mm-hmm. that's always a fun time. Chaotica. Older Echep, old Echep, before Ichip. he got his eye ripped out. Right. Well, uh, or is this an alternate timeline? That, that is an epi- <laughs> That is an alternate timeline, like the alternate timeline that old Voy- or old Janeway got rid of. Uh, okay. Yes. Or technically, that would have been the prime timeline. She created an alternate timeline when she went back at the end of Endgame, at the beginning of Endgame. Right, Curtis. Right. <laughs> yes. Endgame's I just do it great. for his response sometimes. Endgame's great. We should review Endgame. Yeah. Avengers Endgame? Ah. Uh, they have very similar premises. Oh, yeah, Both involve really time travel. That. Yes. Mm. I'm not the first person to make this observation. It's just kind of funny to me. Mm. That's weird. Yeah. 18 years later. <laughs> Avengers copies Voyager. 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 Things. Well, interestingly enough, I saw it in... in I think it was an interview with the Russo brothers. They looked to like all good things and the other endings for things to try uh, and gain inspiration. So yeah. they might have actually taken notes from Star Trek Voyager's Endgame. This is really off topic. Mm, yes. Well, back to the episode, or start the episode. Well, let's, let's let's begin. We open with Chakotay in a shuttlecraft, hanging out, doing Indian rituals, and I made the note. That yeah. they're the expert for Indian culture for Voyager was like just some white dude who made shit up for them. Yeah, you told me that uh, like last week. I think. Yeah, so it's really funny. Yeah, hmm. basically everything that they ever bring up in the entire run of the show is just mumbo jumbo. Some guy sold them for money. Nice. Really shows that respect for culture that Star Trek is known for. Hmm. <laughs> Good job, Voyager. So he's he's sitting 
He's trying to contact the, yeah. his ancestral spirits of his father among the stars, and he had to go yeah. off on his own in a shuttlecraft so that the episode could happen. Yes. Yes. Right. And it, it starts out kind of guns a-blazing. Yeah. Because right after he starts his little prayer... Uh, cut to an interior of a Kazon ship. Yeah. And there's two Kazon. They're like, this this guy's trespassing. We have to We have to punish him. We got to learn a little bit more about Kazon culture, if that's... If that interests like, you. If it's, any, if it's at all interesting at all. I still don't know. I watched an entire episode with it. Yeah. And I don't know if it was interesting or not. We learned more about the <laughs> the sect for Kazon, I suppose. So, I don't know. I suppose at the time when it came, when the episode came out, it was informative to viewers. Because, right. Because yeah. we didn't know. These people were just angry people with bad hairdos. Yeah. Trying to shoot Voyager all the time. I mean, that's what I thought when I was a kid. Hmm. You're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, they're like, "We'll we'll send this kid." It started with a K. I don't remember his name. Car. Car. That was Car. it. Yeah. And that's uh, Aaron Eisenberg's character. Yes. So he um, came came to do an episode of Voyager. Yes. He took a break from doing DS9 stuff for a little bit. Well, he was only a guest star in ds9 at any point yeah he shows up a lot yeah which is cool and one of the great things of ds9 was their strong cast of recurring characters mm. do you know that damar only shows up in 23 episodes so you said yeah, yeah. oh did i say that last week Probably. yes oh well there's my memory memory for you <laughs> it's gone so uh oh. car <clears throat> he's sent out to uh go destroy chakotay's shuttlecraft in his own little shuttle yeah and how do we know that the Kazon technology sucks? Because uh, we got to see Sh- Chakotay fly like super slow in a somersault to avoid him. A very slow maneuver. Faster than the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> sure, but that's not even why. It's the fact that Chakotay's shuttlecraft could defeat a different ship. Because those shuttles get shot out of the sky left and right. We saw runabouts, which are technically more powerful, get shot out of the sky left and right. He's able to defeat a Kazon ship and handily with only minor damage. Mm. You got me. That's how you know the Kazon technology sucks. Well, yeah, they always, they always talk about how... They're always impressed by other <laughs> cultures' technology. So, well, specifically Voyager's yeah. technology. They bring it up pretty much every scene. Yep. Federation. Yeah. Transporters. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, the transporter. Mm. They're always impressed. All oh, right. By that. They use the transporters, the the old switcheroo in the first episode to mm. get Kess back yeah, from right. the the Kazon that were holding her. Mm-hmm. And he shot the two containers of water. This, yeah. this yeah, is unrelated. Yeah, I remember the water. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to talk about Caretaker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why am I bringing it out? So Chakotay tries to hail uh, the, the the little ship that's cars being, that he's attacking. Ship. Yeah, that ca- car ship. And... Uh, Doesn't respond. Yeah. Continues to fire. They exchange fire and came the greatest maneuver that that shuttlecraft ever saw. As you said, it was so slow. It did the the classic loop around to get behind him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If only ships could move in three dimensions. Hey. Khan couldn't think three dimensionally in space. Well, well, he'd never been trained to fight in space. But he's so smart. Okay. He should have known. He's hubris. His hubris was his downfall, Ryan. Uh, Did you not watch the movie? <sighs> <laughs> but I, I, I was really impressed with the camera work in this scene because they just they took oh, yeah. the camera on the interior of Chicote oh, yeah. and they started tilting it. And then the next, it's just upside down. Yeah. It's like, that's how you know he's flipping over. Yeah, yeah that's good stuff. Um, however, I, I did enjoy... The, the practical lights, you know, to simulate oh, the, the explosions. Shields. Yeah. yeah. yeah, like, yeah. A lot of, it's you, a nice you touch. Point, you pointed that out in this Connective episode. A lot tissue. of good practical effects yeah. were used. Well, practical pieces of junk. True. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> well, they, they did that for simulating a transporting uh, transporting a piece of junk. At oh, one right, point. yeah, the, the glowy. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, when it the goes light, to right. Taurus. But you don't see the effect. Mm-hmm. Right. Because they just pan up over the edge yeah. with the light turning off. It's like the... I, it's the a old... clever bit of camera work. Yeah. It's kind of how... I was thinking about this, like the the ride that was at uh, the Star Trek experience. Oh, that's the more... Las Vegas mm-hmm. Hilton. Yeah, mm. the yeah the was there? Las okay. Vegas Hilton. That was kind of how they. Well, it was a little bit more elaborate. It was a lot more elaborate. Yeah, because was... I think I think I showed you that. Yeah. Behind the scenes thing, and it's they had like doors that flew up. Well, into the, the entire rafters. room yeah. flew up into the rafters. Yeah. It was pretty cool. The entire transporter and then room. Which they is... have all the lights just poof, blinding you. Right, so you don't know what's happening. So, and they a don't very, want you against the walls. A very low budget version of the <laughs> which <laughs> it would make sense because the show had less budget than the ride. That yeah. ride came out just at around the same time as Voyager. It was back it? in. It was the nineties. The, mm. This episode came out in '95, and I remember I wasn't alive in '95. You were alive when this episode came out, though. I was. He was. Not him. Not me. Oh right, it's the next year. Huh, sorry. No, I'm '97. Oh wow, that's even <laughs> further. <down the> road. <laughs> okay. Oh, weird. But now people know my age. It either they were building mm. the Las Vegas. The, the Star Trek experience at that time, or it had just come out. I will, I don't know. We'll, we'll figure that out in post. Right. Post. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I postman. The, G-G. <laughs> yeah. We'll call you postman. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, so, what happens next? He decided uh, he had shot the, the Kazon shuttle. His reactor is going to mm-hmm. explode. Chakotay's like, eject. You won't eject. So, he transports. The young car over. Mm-hmm. And, and credits. Yeah. Intro. Which you skipped through. It's the best part of Voyager. Yeah. I was like, let's just... Curtis, you thoroughly enjoy that music. Don't give me that. I I enjoy it. I've seen it about 300 times. Yeah. That was so have I. I still watch it. More my reason why. I just I, didn't feel like we watched it. I still watch DS9's intro. I've watched that more than any other show. Oh, yeah. I mean, if it were Netflix and it had a skip, whatever option. You would have pressed it? Yeah. yeah. These people. I did that for you. All right. So uh, then we open to Captain Janeway's... Uh, wait, no. Ready room area? I think the cliffhanger before the credits was... Was him getting them. shot at. Oh. It, it it wasn't even that. It was just them saying he's ready or something like that. Oh, oh yeah. And then the fight was right after. And then he yeah. gets captured. Okay. And then we cut to Janeway's ready room and yeah. Neelix. Yep. Poor old Neelix. <sighs> Man, he is just the... Nope, I can't even do it with a straight face. He's not the best. He's terrible. Please. Yes. Uh, just, I don't know. I, I know that they were really trying to make Neelix be that that comedy relief like no like, they wanted him to be analogous to quark yeah that's that's kind of what i meant uh. quark didn't start out as comedy relief no but that's eventually what he turned into right but at this point quark was still more nefarious and even then rom was more comic relief yeah but i think the ferengi were kind well not even not always they weren't always kind of more the comic but i don't know I know what you're saying. I'm just saying that, like, we weren't there yet, totally. That would have been season four or five of DS9. Three or four. Voyager started in, like, the midpoint of season two? After the Maquis episode aired was, like, right after that, Voyager starts. And that's season two at some point. Because they didn't have the Defiant yet. They, They start fighting the Maquis with runabouts. Right, Curtis? Right. He totally remembers the Maquis, part one and two. Totally. Nope. Not even close. Well, either way, so this... We uh, we go to Janeway's <laughs> ready room. Neelix is, Neelix. like, trying to... 
He feels Persuade underutilized. Her, yeah, persuade mm. her to be more useful. You weren't included in the uh, the combat training exercise on Holodeck. Yeah. No, I wasn't. And then uh, uh, Tuvok the, called her to the bridge, and she's she's rushing to was, get out of it there. Was probably <laughs> Tuvok who said, "No, you can't go to this thing." Oh yeah, he's always like the reason why he, Neelix he doesn't get to have more foot fun. down to Neelix. <laughs> yeah. Which probably is one of the reasons why I like Tuvok so much. <laughs> uh, yeah, we go out to the bridge. They discover that, or no, they they, they see discover that. some some debris. Yes. Or no, no, no. Two or Chakotay hadn't checked in. They're yeah. like, we haven't heard from him. We need to go investigate. Yeah. She's like, well, his flight plan says he was really close. I'm like, you wouldn't know that offhand. It, are you sending shuttles out left and right? Also, they were over a planet. That's right. Which I think, this is going to sound strange, but I think that's a mistake in editing. I think that that shot is supposed to be when Voyager gets to the moon later. Mm. Because it kind of looks the same. Mm. I don't know. Who knows? I have no idea. It doesn't matter. It's not important. Not the important. Well, eventually they discover that he's been in a... A scruff. With... A tumble. Yeah. With uh, the Kazon. The Kazon. Well, they don't know it's Kazon. They just yeah. find some debris yeah. and an ion trail that does not match Federation engines. Yes. Ion trail. So what are we saying? That someone killed Chakotay and then ran off? That's speculation, Mr. Paris. That's and everyone knows I only get to speculate on the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> Parody Janeway. Uh, it's priceless. Well, we we continue moving forward, and uh, Chakotay and Car. Yeah, Car wakes up after after the skirmish. No, no that happened when be, right before they got captured. Oh. Okay. He woke up and was like, "Kill me." Yeah. We we kind of glossed over that. Oh yeah. Because Car was going in to kill someone to earn his name through a feat of strength and valor in battle. Mm-hmm. Mm. Hence, kind of the Klingon-ish nature. <laughs> but they're, they're kind of bad Klingons. <laughs> <laughs> you failed in battle. You die. Yeah. <laughs> That'll keep your population going. You'll have plenty of warriors. Yeah. Though I think that's more of like that sect. Mm. Is that that's what's doing it? It was kind of the implication by the end. Mm was like the head guy was making their sect do that. Okay. At least that's what I thought. Mm. I don't know. Oh, okay. I'm the only one thinking. Well, I <laughs> didn't get that implication at yeah. all. Well, we're not really spoilers for much. the end of the episode. <laughs> Aaron Eisenberg's <laughs> character shoots the head Kazon guy and then he he turns to the other guy and he's like, "You're your first Mar, Maz, Maj." Maj, you're first Maj now. My, you get to decide what happens to me. And he's like, you get to live. The other guy was like, you die. It doesn't matter if you've redeemed yourself. Uh, yeah. I, I see. Adding to the fluidic nature of the uh, Kazan <laughs> culture. Oh, yes, as we discover. <laughs> yeah. How many sects are there? I don't know. <laughs> Yesterday there were 18. <laughs> Today? Who knows? Yeah. If yeah, I had known of... this was your space, I wouldn't have come here. This might not be our space tomorrow. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> wow. It's kind of all over the place. Yeah. So their car and Chakotay are in this room. Yeah. They, well, they get... They, they get, get taken uh, to taken this in ceremony in room. room. Yeah. Not a prison cell. But they're being guarded by one dude. Uh, there, there was two at one point. At one point, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in this... There's no door on this room either. <laughs> we learn... We continue to learn more about at least this sect of Kazon where it's like a the trophy great people, room. Yeah, it's a trophy room. Yeah. The, the car goes around and he's like, this one guy killed this guy and he got this trophy and that's how he earned his name. And then this guy killed this other guy and mm-hmm. got this trophy and that's how he earned his name. Right. And then this guy killed my brother and got this trophy from him, and that's how he earned his name. Yeah. Like, okay, I'm starting to see a pattern here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, it, it continues forward. I think this is when it jumps back to Voyager, and they discover that it was a Kazon. Right. 
because they beamed in the, the wreckage. Yeah. And Bellana was analyzing it. Oh, right. oh, oh that's a, yeah. This is made of some something, something dura, blah, blah, blah. Right. It's alloy. not, it's not, this alloy is not found. Ships. No. Okay. Yeah. They couldn't have scanned it with their scanners. <laughs> with their sensors, right? Like they every needed other to, episode. Well, I gotta, Curtis, I gotta they needed to everybody. pad that runtime out. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because the buddy cop adventure with Chicote runs about 20 minutes <laughs> flat yeah. of the eh, 15. Um, because I'm pretty sure that's why that scene with the doctor exists, too. Because oh, yeah. <laughs> there's no it. point to that. Yeah, I, I didn't quite understand that either. It no, was no, funny. Were, it was funny to watch. They were like, this is the wreckage to our shuttle, which they could apparently figure out just with their scanners that time. Right. But they needed to figure out if someone had been on that shuttle when it exploded. Right. They needed uh. to know if Chakotay had died. So they beamed it to the doctor so he could scan for <laughs> bio residue or something. Right. <laughs> Once again, why their sensors can't just do that? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe their <laughs> sensors were undergoing firmware upgrades. From who? Maybe Bolana created her own custom firmware updates and they were in the middle of them. <laughs> And so they had to beam the stuff on board. With the bio gel. <laughs> the, oh, no. <laughs> Not the bio packs. Yep. It's... Oh, boy. <laughs> what was the... There's the an episode where they got sick. That? Yeah. The bio packs got sick from uh, Cause the they're, cheese. Because they're like The living. cheese. Yes. Neelix brought cheese onto Voyager, and it made the bio packs sick. So the ship started shutting down. <laughs> oh my god. This was an episode, Curtis. Oh. They so they're running out that, of material. So does this mean that maybe she was doing like genetic splicing to do these You're, firmware updates? Uh, that's speculation. I speculation. suppose. There's yeah. no indication in the episode that anything like that happened. I know. Yeah. Well It's almost like they need to pad out that runtime. Right. I don't remember where we were. All <laughs> uh, oh, right, Chakotay and Carr, after he explains their history, he goes up to the, that other Kazan, who becomes first Maj at the end, but he's not first Maj yet. And he's like, I demand to speak to Razik. Yeah. And Razik. then Chakotay's like, I demand to speak to Razik. They and then Razik. each other's lines yes. a couple times. Well, that's to let you know that they're, they're communicating on the same wavelength. They're getting to along. They're, uh, they're meshing yes. as as characters buddy cop buddy yes. cop adventure <laughs> okay there's a pseudo buddy cop adventure in here somewhere curtis i'm not sure if it's good or not but it exists <laughs> okay <laughs> um, i don't even know what buddy cop is <laughs> two cops get together that seem like they can't get along and then they get along by the end and they go on adventures oh gotcha like lethal weapon oh or like uh Nathan Fillion's character in The Rookie, probably. I yeah. haven't watched The Rookie. I haven't, I haven't either. I haven't either. So how could you make that comparison? I, I can just imagine that's what he probably goes through. There's got to be an episode. Your mic keeps going down. Yeah, I know. It keeps <laughs> like, oh. That's why I keep going. Mm. <laughs> We've been exiled, people. Yes. <laughs> the editing cheese. fixed my microphone. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Something about cheese and biopacks? Uh, Speculation? Yeah. Right. And then they, okay, so they eventually meet with the leader. Right. Of the Kazan people. But, yes. Yes. That's, I think that's still in chronological order. Mm -hmm. I, I barely remember. We just watched it. It's, yeah. They Razik. Meet, yeah. Razik comes in. He's like, oh, what do you want to talk to me about? Yeah. We don't like you, Federation. You're going to be executed <laughs> right. tonight. And hmm. So continues the trend of Chakotay being called Federation yeah. constantly by every <laughs> Kazan he meets. Yeah. And then we cut back to Voyager well, he for talks some to reason. Car. Yeah, hmm. no, 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 no. That doesn't happen yet. Okay. Unless they were still analyzing the parts at that point, the first parts, because maybe Chakotay and Carr have to escape before they can... Yeah. Uh, inspect the second bit of wreckage. Right. Okay. So, uh, Razik's 
it's like he's talking to Car and he's like, there are no second chances in battle. And he's like, I'm sorry, you have to die, but you'll eat at my right hand tonight. Yeah. It's like, okay. He's a, he's a merciful killer. I guess. Wow. Mercy kill. I don't know. Then I think we go back. Then we go back to Voyager. They do more scanny scan stuff. And we get back to the Kazons. And he brings the, the, <laughs> the leader brings the, the children. More yeah. children. So, and Chakotay tries to like, I'm going to be super nice and super cool because then you kids won't want to kill me. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then the Kazon dude's like, here's a phaser. Which one of you <laughs> wants to kill him first? And they all grab it immediately. <laughs> yeah. It's like, ha, Federation, they all want to <laughs> kill you. You can't, you can't be chummy with them. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> There are great parts to this episode. Yeah. <laughs> I maintain it. So that that progresses forward, and uh, he's like, he's gonna give the phaser to Chakotay so he can yeah. kill Car, so that Car can get a name in death, so that he can rectify his mistake of letting or of saving Car. And I think is the rationale. In I don't. That rem- scene. I don't remember if that. I know that he said that the only way I'll let you leave the ship is if you kill Carr. Right. And then he's like, do you have another, and if I refuse, and he doesn't say anything. So it's like, right. oh, so I don't quite know what the stakes are they here. They both die. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Captain Picard, being a man of culture and respecting other people's cultures, would have grabbed that phaser and immediately shot that kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not, but it came what are you to me about? watching that. Picard loved kids. I didn't even think about that when it came to me. <laughs> like I was just watching that scene for the first time a couple of days ago when I was going through episodes, and I was just like, I feel like Picard being the man who was like, I, I will do whatever your culture demands of me, would have grabbed the phaser and just shot it. I don't know why, like, I knew in character Picard wouldn't do that, but the Picard who was, like, super extreme to respecting other cultures would have. Like, like a Picard that wasn't quite Picard. Mm. Mm. Made in the show. Why have you neglected your duty? (laughs) (laughs) Bye. Bye. Um. I don't know, Um. it was just an image that came to me when watching that scene. It was just Picard gutting him down. (laughs) Yikes. Well, then it moves forward. He gives Chakotay the gun and he drops in an awkward, it. No, no, no. He gives yeah. Chakotay the gun in an awkward way so that Chakotay can grab it in an awkward way so that he can drop it. In an awkward way. In an awkward way <laughs> to start a daring escape. Daring yeah. escape. Daring escape where he, he holds Razik at gunpoint. Yeah. He's like, I'll kill him. Uh-huh. And, and then the other guy's like, you really think you can escape in your puny little shuttlecraft? And it's like, I'll take those I'll take that chance or That's a right it, line. Yeah. Is it? I'll take those odds or something. Yeah, it's something along those lines. And that's important because five seconds later he's like, Hey, you coming along to car? And the other guy's like, He won't go with you and then car hits him, grabs his phaser, yeah. and he's like, You you won't earn her name and he's like, I'll take that chance. Get it? They're, they're meshing. Yeah. Yep. I got it. What I thought was kind of funny was Chakotay was like kind of doing this weird little speech about how he's nonviolent and <laughs> won't won't hurt anybody, and then he immediately goes and threatens to kill this dude. So he I was like, I don't he didn't actually kill him. And when he left the ship, he stunned him. Right. Right. Stunned. Okay. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. We we weren't aware that there was a stun setting on Kazon weapons. I guess. They might need to take other Kazon prisoners to interrogate. Right. Maybe. It, it, I don't know. It was just a thought that came to me when watching. Well, they're getting back into the shuttlecraft with Carr, and they're flying away, and they're trying to escape. And then they, for whatever reason, they have to go to the moon. Well, they aren't going to outrun the ship. Yeah. And as we saw, their evasive maneuvers were very ineffective. They pres- they proceeded to get shot by every laser beam it was a it was about the millennium falcon level <laughs> of maneuvers There's millennium falcon, falcon from episode mm. four Star no Wars. they were going a little bit more he, he put a right turn in there i don't think the millennium falcon would have gotten there in episode four mm. who knows 
wow, look at these maneuvers. Mm. And it was funny because earlier in the episode, after fighting Kara's ship, the computer was like, aft shields are disabled, and they're just getting shot from behind, and those shields seem perfectly fine. Yeah. Uh, seems well, like an oversight. Shield gets damaged. They... The ship gets shot. And yeah. He's like, we need to find we need to find a m- planet or a moon. P- computer, look for an M-class atmosphere. Mm-hmm. It's like, there's there's one moon nearby. Yep. Lucky they were there. Like, a transport is not recommended. It's too far. And he's like, we'll go anyways. Yep. So they're and kind they're, of adrift. Cut to black. Right. Cut to black. But the implication is the shuttle blew up. Yeah. Because Voyager finds the shuttle remains later. Mm-hmm. Which, in an odd way, makes a lot of sense because the moon and the planet would have kept a rotation around whatever star. Mm. So them finding random wreckage kind of makes sense, but it also doesn't because the gravity well would have pulled it along with it. Mm. I don't know. It depends on how far, I suppose, they were from the moon, which isn't clear at any point. Nope. Yeah. No. Mm. Science. I guess. They wake up on the moon... And he's like, oh, I guess the transporter worked. Oh, we made oh, it. We made it. <laughs> and uh, they're just kind of laying there on a, on a on this rock that looks very familiar from many other episodes of Star Trek. It's almost like they were at Vasquez Rocks. Yes. It looked, mm. looked mm. very Gornish. <laughs> it wasn't a Gorn in sight. What are you talking about? Uh, it looked like one could have been there. One could have been there. Who yeah. knows? I'm wondering if they... Perhaps this director had just never shot there before and never really watched a whole lot of <laughs> Star Trek episodes. it's very obvious like, that it's the Vasquez Rocks. Right. And he, they were like, oh, yeah, this is a good location. So he's like, oh, wow, look at that rock over there. That <laughs> looks cool. <laughs> Put, that Put that in the background. Like that. It's a very alien-looking environment yeah. that has never been used. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Well, so uh, they're... car is... Car is indignant about getting saved. He's like, I've saved your life three times. Or I keep saving your life. So just keep your gratitude to yourself or something along yeah. those lines. To um, yourself. And then he's trying to figure out a place to go. He takes out his tricorder. He starts walking. Car's like, no, don't go that way. Yep. And then there's, there's, a, there's a, a proton, proton, be- oh, proton, yeah, it was proton beam. beam. The proton beams. Proton which beams. Are good at killing people. Anti-protons. Good at finding cloaked ships. Yes. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just thinking chronotons now, so... Oh, no, not Since chroniton, chroniton particles. Part, chroniton. That, that's never a good sign. Oh. <laughs> if you ever find yourself as a yellow or red-shirted officer on a starship and they mention chroniton particles, mm. find the nearest <laughs> escape pod. Get away. Get out. Yeah. <laughs> Fly away, Stanley. Be, Be free. free. That's completely unrelated. Uh, so... And then uh, Carr is like, how oh, I saved your life. <laughs> or or no, was no, it no. Chakotay like, saying like... Yeah, no, no. Chakotay gets there, but Carr's like, this is a dangerous land and you're in my territory, so you better do what I say. Yeah. It's like, well, you saved my life two more times and we'll be even. That's it. Yeah. Uh, what, what an incredible adventure. Yes. That these two are on. Then they spend That's the rest of good, the time in a It's cave. a good buddy cop. <laughs> Some good buddy cop dialogue. Yep. They're starting to get along. They're starting to mesh. Yeah. Great. <laughs> I feel like the end of this episode, like there's kind of the implication that this character will recur at some point. And he never comes back. Yeah. yeah it wasn't like, like uh, what's his name? Hugh. Hugh? Yeah. What do you mean? Hugh well, does show up again. He, he does, but I remember the reason why I was kind of like, oh, he's going to show up was because he looked back at them as... Uh, he transported away, hmm. knowing that... He did show up again. And he did. But Aaron Eisenberg, he didn't look back at them. He just kept looking <laughs> forward. <laughs> I see. Uh. Flawless <laughs> reasoning from Ryan. Yeah, I mean, if it works... He's got me. <laughs> He's got you, yeah. You've got him, Jim. You've got him right where we want him. <laughs> I can do this uh, all day, folks. So they they start heading off for a, a, a safer cave. place. A yeah, cave. eventually yeah. a cave, and, which uh, is also a well used. Then location. We, we we're off to the magic meeting room. Yeah, on Voyager. Yeah, as it is sometimes referred to. And uh, 
because that's where they solve all their problems. Paris is sitting at the head of the table. Right. I just thought that was hilarious because <laughs> they didn't want to balance it three and three. It's two, three, one, one. Yep. <laughs> eh, whatever. But the scene opens up great because they're talking to the doctor over the monitor because he doesn't have the, the, <laughs> the, the mobile, mobile emitter yet. Oh, yeah. Pre-mobile emitter. That was emitter. season three? Whenever that time travel episode was. I think it's like three to four or four to five. I don't, I don't quite remember which. It's not three to four because that's Scorpion part one and two. No, it, it's, it's in a season. It's not it a is? season ender. Oh, yeah. okay. I think it's season three. Okay. Maybe okay. that's the next one we should go over. Oh, boy. We could watch Endgame. Avengers Ooh. Endgame. Uh, I have could. the Blu-ray we somewhere. Could. I have it too. Yeah. Is Curtis own Avengers Endgame on Blu-ray? No. It's on Disney Plus. I can yeah, physical watch media, them. man. Uh, there's so many Marvel movies. Did you see? Not to get too off topic, but the Super Duper. Yes, I know what you're talking set. about. Yes, Oof. I oh, saw man. it. I don't so need it. Cool. It looks so cool. We already own like all those movies individually. I don't need a box set. Yeah, but box set. <laughs> box set. <laughs> Who knows? Like, maybe it has more bonus features. Right. That box set. I believe is like the same price as like the Skywalker Saga box set is going to be, and it has like three times as many movies. Mm. That's insanity. No, wow. I believe it. Wow. My point is, don't buy the Skywalker Saga box set. It's not worth it. <laughs> ah, I see. That's where I was going with that. Okay. Okay. I don't know if I actually had a point when I began that, but we got there. Okay. Making so they're, connections, there's, meshing. They're on the. They're. They're in the ready room, whatever. They're solving problems. <laughs> right. They beamed all this debris into, uh, yeah. into sick bay so that the doctor could analyze it, like we said earlier, to find out if there was biomatter I mean, in the debris. He had right. a pretty good like <laughs> ending part where he's like, get this junk out of here. He keeps throwing more <laughs> in front of him. He's like, somebody just get rid of this now. <laughs> so, so I can work in my lab. <laughs> I mean, the doctor's great. I, the doctor is always episode has great good. moments, Curtis. <laughs> right? Yeah, a it's just here. hampered by a Voyager episode. Uh, yeah. Uh, so they they solve the problem. They figure out. Okay. Well, they figured out that Chakotay didn't die, so she's like, mm-hmm. "He's on the planet. I know it." Or that's what she's going to assume. Yeah. Well, and there's there's a lot of thermo ther, thermo something radiation. Is something that's blocking communications right. and scans. Yeah, so they need to find a way to that. That's Taurus's job. Figure out a way how we can cut through this whatever radiation stuff. But she's not going to wait for her to figure that out. She's yeah. going to go down now. Let's go. Yep. She brings Tuvok, uh, Kess, and some and other random, random gold shirt. Yep. Who doesn't get shot? What's yeah. the point? What's the point? Uh, You're going to bring him and not kill him. Well, How I, do I know that the Kazon are really a threat? I mean, they were really <laughs> trying not to kill a lot of Voyager <laughs> people. Because they're like, we don't have very many to spare. So maybe they're... Voyager tr- didn't care anyways. Yeah, true. But maybe in some cases they're like, let's let's not this time. Do you remember in the first episode when they were like, we have a limited uh, yes. equipment yeah, of yeah. photon torpedoes? Yes. And then they shot like 80 photon torpedoes throughout the series? Yep. They were at like mm-hmm. negative forty th- photons by the end. They they figured out how to make. <laughs> we'll just replicate more. Yeah, exactly. the replicator kind of does ruin it. Conservation of mass doesn't it matter. Doesn't matter. The replicator. Guess. No. I guess. I don't know. It's just it's something. It's it, it, the interesting tidbits of the failure. Of Voyager's premise, or the failure to live up to the premise, where it's like, oh, you don't have resources or backup, and you're sort of on your own. But at the end of every week, they just they fix up the ship, and they're right as rain. Doesn't matter. We hit that reset button so hard. We even brought Harry Kim back from the dead like four times. <laughs> oh, at least twice. He could have just stayed dead. Like <laughs> <laughs> he really just Harry Kim fan over here. Yeah just didn't need to be there I'm, they almost got rid of him i know they should have gotten rid of kess <laughs> or they should have not gotten rid of kess kess comes back in an episode yeah and then she goes away again right <laughs> it's like when tasha yara shows up in yesterday's enterprise there yep. she is 
and then mm, this, and then her daughter is there. Talk about off the rails. Yeah. Well, they solved the problem, and also well, uh, problem. Janeway uh, lets Neelix get some more things to do. <laughs> All right, to sit on the bridge. Neelix, <laughs> you'll be you'll be assisting Lieutenant Paris on the bridge. Yep. Because Lieutenant Paris is now in command because I'm taking all the rest of the people higher up in the command structure yeah. <laughs> with me on the planet. Yep. Yeah. Well, they continue forward. Which I find, forward. I, I only find it like kind of funny because in the scene where uh, Paris has to take command, he starts out at the helm and then he ends at the helm as if he wasn't actually in command. Uh. He he but then yeah, again, he, he was fly. not only the jack of all trades, he was the master of all trades. He's their <laughs> medic, their pilot, he's a command officer, he's a command O, he's a history buff. <laughs> what can't this man do? <laughs> it's I don't true. Know. I mean, he loves, does everything. And he always has time in the holodeck to go do whatever. To if do it's whatever. not like fix a car or, I don't know, play as a 1930s yeah space pirate dude he woos Bolana Torres yeah. despite her best efforts yeah <laughs> uh, he just he always a not man, only is he like a, is a amazing savant. at everything but he always has time to do everything he's a savant yeah right if he had been in charge of Voyager they would have gotten <laughs> home in three seasons tops huh? <laughs> maybe three and a half they would have stopped off to play some Captain Proton for like what was the reasoning for like why he had to be talked back in to be in Starfleet? Because I remember in the first episode he was like he's at a penal colony. Yeah, colony. Ryan, like, do you remember? A, do you remember a TNG episode? I don't remember the title of the TNG episode, but the the Enterprise goes back to Earth for some ceremony, hmm. and Wesley Crusher was a cadet and he got in trouble. Oh yeah, we've talked about this before, right? And how, it, yeah, the, the weird maneuver thing that killed the C- cadet. Killed one cadet. But not Tom Paris, cadet Lorenco, Lorenzo, Lacarno, Lacarno. That's it. He got, he took the blame. He took the fall. He was like, I, I was in charge. I'll take responsibility. And he went off to prison. And but, that was supposed to be Tom Paris. Right, because they have essentially the same background, but because every time they would have had they would have mentioned Locarno as the name, they would have had to pay royalties to the person who wrote that episode and uh, came up with that character. He's Lieutenant Tom Paris, not Lieutenant Locarno. Okay. Hmm. It's it's very fascinating. Fascinating. Oh. Fascinating. Well, we get back down to the planet. And uh, oh, right. they, they got to a cave. And... Uh, Paris talks to the, the oh, Kazon yeah. guys, and they're like, we're going to help you. Yeah. Your away team we will beam down and help them. After Neelix <laughs> has, to, has to talk about... <laughs> he deduces yeah. things. Right. <laughs> Which I suppose uh, uh, plays about into his, that episode his... where he plays detective. I guess. Mm. And he figured out that Tom Paris was leaving Voyager, mm. which was a ploy. It's un- not important. Okay. <laughs> well, he also mentioned how he like sold stuff to the oh, right. to the case on apparently I sold scanners yeah. like the ones you're using to you. Yeah, it's like I'm okay. sure you did. You scanned the same life signs we did. What? Yeah. What, what's he talking about? What's he going on about? Neelix, you were on the bridge to scare other people with your scent. You're not there to talk. <laughs> well, okay. Then what happens? Then they're on the planet. Then they're on the planet? Okay. They're in the cave. No, they're not in the cave yet. They're not in the cave? No, Janeway is walking around, meets the Kazon, and then the Kazon trick her uh, and well, her away team. Chakotay and, oh, right. and the yeah. kid are oh, in, yeah. in the cave. That's what I, I forgot I meant. about that part. Yeah. yeah. Kid is going to, car is going to kill Chakotay, Chakotay while he's asleep. like, no, asleep. I'm a coward. All right. right and he, he can't do that. Picks up the tricorder and closes it for some reason i i don't know yeah, but then chakota has like a weird little speech about how him earning a name and his uniform is like one and the same well mm. it is because they had to like similar, work for it right. yeah it's similar in concept so that's so the, there we go more buddy something. more buddy cop stuff for meshing even more mesh. buddy cop. yeah all the little cogs need to mesh together 
Right. Yep. Hey, he finally got it. I had to spell it out. <laughs> Take one step out that door and you're fired. <laughs> Good movie. It. Yeah. Watch The Incredibles. It's fun. Well, now you gave it away. <laughs> Oh boy. So now Janeway and her away team are walking around in Vasquez Rocks and the Kazon show up yep. with their bad haircuts and their yeah. spindly clothes. And they're like, oh, thank goodness for your technology. It would have <laughs> taken us weeks to find them. <laughs> <laughs> like, Okay. Uh, uh, the, thank Great. you. <laughs> and uh, while that's happening, uh, Chicote and Carr are coming up with some plan <laughs> to... Uh, right. To save Carr's life, to spare his life, and yeah. also get Chicote out of the situation. Yeah, so it, I think the plan was they were going to kill Chicote right. for like two minutes. Right, straight out of the original series. A yeah. long time. Yeah. Ba, 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 ba. Oh, wait, I forgot to stand. <laughs> Talk about obscure references. Stand for the national anthem. <laughs> I really hope Radke sees this because <laughs> he'll understand that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so they come up with this plan, and uh, the Kazon try to lure the. No, they do lure. They lure them into a, a bubble shield. Right. Which happened exactly 10 years before. Star Wars Episode Three. <laughs> yep. So who's copying who? Yeah. I mean, I just referenced like we were watching it, and I was just like, "Ray shields." Uh, <laughs> Wait a minute. How does this happen? We're smarter. Than this. I just. It, yeah, it, but those shields weren't very strong because they got out of it pretty quickly. They right. didn't show them getting out of it. No. But they, they did. And they, yep. They're in their the tiny little green bubble that barely encapsulates them based on where they're standing yeah. because that's they could barely afford the effect for that. Uh, the editing. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there's a there's there, the, there's the little thing yep, on the yeah, wall. Yeah. The emitter. If we narrow our uh, if we modulate the phaser, yeah. narrow beam, we could cut through. And Janeway's like on the double, <laughs> make it fast. <laughs> and that was right after the Kazon tricked them. Yep. Sometimes your technology is not always an asset, Federation, or yeah. something. Uh, like, it's so terrible. It didn't <sighs> didn't take very long. Nope. So we fast forward to the cave. The Kazan all rush in. Oh, right. Uh, Chakotay, uh, Belana Torres oh, yeah. Cut broke through, the... through their interference by creating a dampening field. Yeah. Whatever. No, no. Not important. No, no, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Chronotons. <laughs> space, uh, space whales? Space whales. <laughs> I don't, know. I don't um, know where I'm going with this one. Anyways, uh, she breaks through the interference, and so Chakotay is like, get ready. You'll have to resuscitate me. A code black resuscitation. Get ready. I thought it was code white. He definitely Not said important. code black. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, Curtis said code black, which means I was right. I don't know. It was definitely code black. Uh, yes. Maybe it was blue. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very important, important <laughs> to know. This no, no, no. Code blue is when they're landing Voyager on a planet. It's blue alert. Oh, blue alert. Right, right. Curtis remembers. Blue alert. The best alert. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't they, know did that, they did that in the episode before this, because that was the th- the 37s. Oh, yeah. That was the 37s. Yeah. That, At I, the end of the 37s, they go to the magnificent, awesome city that is shown off screen. Yeah. Uh, or they don't get to see... They don't get to see the awesome, magnificent yeah. city that the humans who are abducted by aliens and taken halfway across the galaxy built. Yes. That's too bad. Almost like no. the budget couldn't handle it. I don't know. Who knows? We got to see Amelia Earhart. Right. That's Isn't that why it was... I don't know. Who cares? Mm. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of the 37s, Curtis. Kazon I, rush into this Rush cave. into the cave. And there's there's car. He's got his phaser to Chicote. And and then comes Janeway and Tuvok and yeah. them... They got out of that real quick off screen. Yep. He, Didn't take Tuvok long. really doubled that. <clears throat> uh, then Carr decides instead of shooting Chakotay, he's going to shoot... I don't know. I don't remember. 
We've been Started saying his name the whole R. episode. Rick Tech. I don't know. That's not it. You're not Pickle even Rick. trying. I don't know. Funniest shit I've ever seen. <laughs> well, whatever his name is, they you kill him. Choose him. Because <laughs> he's like, you're my enemy, yes. not them. Not them. But then right. five seconds later, he says, you're my enemy. Yeah. I'll shoot you the next time you come this way. <laughs> yep. Right. Very consistent. Yeah. And he didn't look back. Yep. Right. Didn't look back. But yeah, so he shoots Raz, Raz al Ghul. Raz al Ghul. Yeah. <laughs> Razik. And then, Razik. That's, that's it. Razik. Yeah. Shoots him. He shoots Razik. And then, and then he, he makes he, the other dude. Yeah, he's like, you're, you're the first Maj now. And he gives him his name, and he's like, yes, cool. And you're, you're not my allies, Federation, even though I just said you weren't my enemy. You're, you're my enemy now. Yeah, we so go back leave. and forth a lot. And then uh, they transport away. Uh, he doesn't look at them <laughs> to, to, to make us know that he would no idea. maybe this make a presence a big indicator again. indicator of whether or not a guest star will re- reappear. No? Okay. Oh no! Yeah, now we do. Uh, we go back to Voyager and uh, Chakotay, Chakotay is doing his ritual again. <clears throat> oh yes, in his quarters. In his quarters, where he could have just done it and not had a buddy cop episode with Aaron Eisenberg. May Aaron yep. Eisenberg rest in peace. Yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, he passed away seven months ago, more or less ish, mm. and he was only fifty. Mm. Kind of sad. Kind of sad. One of the last things he did was that DS9 documentary. Mm. Yeah. It was pretty so cool. cool. Yeah, Good documentary. I, mm-hmm. I liked it. Mm. They didn't mention profit and lace in their, their little checkmark section. Mm. You don't remember profit and lace, do you? Sounds like a Ferengi episode. It is. Beyond that, oh. It's the episode where Quark becomes a woman. Oh, that one. Of I course. believe I've mentioned this before. Yeah, yeah uh, but uh. they were going through their little check marks of all the, the great progressive things they did they didn't mention their transgender episode with quark hmm. it's almost like it was played as a joke hmm. yeah. yeah just saying yeah so yeah and then chakotay he asks his father's spirit to watch over mm-hmm. jal karin carrick i forget what his name became whatever Car's jar carrick i don't know gar carrick gar car gar car I have no idea. Jar Jar? Jar Jar. Misa called Jar Jar Binks. Misa, your humble servant. Oh, no. We need to end this episode. <laughs> <laughs> True words have never been spoken. All righty. Well, uh, before we end, right. uh, we wanted to ask you, the viewers, to uh, maybe uh, ask if uh, you had any episodes of Star Trek or any other shows or movies that you maybe would like us to to watch and review yeah also if uh if any of you have also watched these same episodes as us so this one was season two episode two of star trek voyager if you want to watch it and if you have some i don't know some comments or some questions you can shoot them our way comments concerns yeah Whatever. i don't want to hear your concerns <laughs> <laughs> but yeah if uh, this is going fish mouth on us, yes, it was a dog. No, I'm that character from the Muppets. I can never remember his name, but he's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, Swedish chef. No, no. he's a, that's not Swedish. He's his friend. Oh, yeah, that's Swedish chef's friend. Yep, yep. <laughs> he has a name. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember the name. <laughs> I have to, yeah, I have to search it on Wikipedia every time. Yep. So. But yeah, if you if any viewers also have comments about uh, that episode that we just reviewed, or if you have some suggestions for what maybe we should review next, mm. you know, comment them in the video maybe. or uh, tweet them at Noah or mm, yeah. send me a message on Got Facebook. It. Noah needs more tweeter followers. Yes. No. And we need more subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who follows my Twitter will be suddenly inundated with Halo tweets because yes. that's Halo. about all I use Twitter for. Halo. Halo. But yeah. Oh, see, Curtis, one day you're going to be substituted out with someone who's actually played Halo, and then we'll talk about it. Uh, 
That'll be in like three years. They're going to make a Halo movie one of these days. Yeah. I know it. They kind of have. Huh? Huh? It depends huh? on how you look at it. Like an actual feature film? There's features up from the Halo universe. It hmm. it was sort of like a mini series hmm. leading up to Halo 4. It's called Forward Under Dawn. Hmm. No it's idea. live action. Great. There was also yeah. Nightfall, but people don't talk about Nightfall. It's terrible. I don't talk about Nightfall. That's good. Your people. Like and subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> nope, I'm not doing it. Like the comments. <laughs> subscribe to the commenters. Yeah, they probably deserve it more than we do. <laughs> comment on the other comments. Alrighty. Comments on a comment of a comment with a comment. Yep. About a comment. To comment. A comment. All right. One Thank too far, you. Ryan. Audio level is going down. Down. Now. Good night. The distant future.